Howdy folks, Blair here, and I'm going to talk today about self-identification and why I struggle with terms such as atheist to describe myself. Now, I've never been really big on defining myself by way of some external influence, and that's what self-identification is. The Merriam-Webster definition of the term self-identification is identification with someone or something outside oneself. I do believe that identification and, and definition can come from without, but I think that it has to be as a result of a process, an arduous process from within. I don't think that it's wise to simply take on characteristics of something that is considered to be an external identity, such as atheism. And for an example of what I'm talking about, I'm going to cite an old essay by Sarah Bunting. Uh, this is the, uh, the Yes You Are essay about feminism. A lot of you will have encountered this before. I'm going to read the last paragraph of it for you, so bear with me. <clears throat> yes, you are. You are a feminist. If you believe in, support, look fondly on, hope for, and or work towards equality of the sexes, you are a feminist. Period. It's more complicated than that. Of course it is, and yet it's exactly that simple. It has nothing to do with your sexual preference or your sense of humor or your fashion sense or your charitable donations or what pronouns you use in official correspondence or whether you think Andrea Dworkin is full of crap or how often you read Bust or Ms. or actually whether you've got a vagina. In the end, it's not about that. It is about political, economic, and social equality of the sexes and it is about claiming that definition on its own terms instead of qualifying it because you don't want anyone to think that you don't shave your pits. It is about saying that you are a feminist and just letting that statement sit there instead of feeling a compulsion to modify it immediately with, but not, you know, that kind of feminist, because you don't want to come off all angry girl. It is about understanding that liking Oprah and Chanel doesn't make you a bad feminist, that only liking the wage gap makes you a bad feminist because bad does not enter into the definition of feminism. It is about knowing that if folks can't grab a dictionary and see for themselves that the entry for feminism doesn't say anything about hating men or chick flicks or any of that crap, that's their problem. It is about knowing that a woman is the equal of a man in art, at work, and under the law, whether you say it out loud or not. But for God's sake, start saying it out loud already. You are a feminist. Now Sarah Bunting, uh, for the term feminist, cites uh, again the merriam webster definition of the term uh, which is, uh, actually she doesn't actually cite the term feminist, she cites the term feminism which states the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes or organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. She uses this definition of the term feminism, which is an organized movement, to derive a definition for the term feminist, uh, which is someone who subscribes to feminism. Now, she then turns around and says, if you believe in any of the things which feminism has espoused over the years, if you, if you support any of the ideals that feminism has espoused over the years, then you are therefore a feminist. In other words, she's forcing this identity down upon people who may agree with her. And I don't think that the motivation here is a pure one. I think that there is much to be said for the connotative meaning of a term of identity. And she talks about that in this article, as I, as I was pointing out in this, uh, this last paragraph that I just read for you, uh, or as she was pointing out, uh, it has to do with this, it doesn't have to do with that, feminism is this, feminism is not that. Um, what she's trying to do is she's trying to remove the connotation uh, from the term feminist and then take the term feminist and reapply it to everybody who agrees with her. I think that this is bogus. I don't think that, as although her intentions I'm sure in her own mind are good, I don't think that she has the right to uh, to wrap anybody else up in that, uh, that term. Uh, it's not her place to do so. It is the place of each individual. So myself as a consumer of the essay that she wrote I have to make a determination myself whether I'm going to take on the term feminist and use it to describe myself. And I'm not going to get into whether I use that term to describe myself in this video. However, the, uh, the term that I've been 
more dealing with lately, the, uh, the identity uh, with which I've been dealing lately is, uh, is atheists. Now, atheism is an easy one because it, is, uh, uh, it defines itself in the negative. It's simply a lack of belief in God or gods. Fine. Uh, that's, that's easy enough. And strictly speaking, that's true. I don't believe in God or gods. I also don't subscribe to a lot of superstition. Um, and I'm, I feel that I'm naturally skeptical of things. I like to see evidence for... Uh, I like to see evidence for arguments that are made about uh, the, the state of the world, about the mechanisms that drive us. So, fine. Uh, so strictly speaking, semantically, uh, I am an atheist. However, I would probably be pretty pissed off if someone came up to my face and told me that I am an atheist. Unless I had come out and said so first, in which case I guess it's, it's uh, free for all. But, no, I'm not okay with, with simply dictating identity to people, to issuing identity by edict, uh, on the basis of a semantic argument. That's bullshit. So my argument is that because I reserve the right to self-determination as much as it, as it is possible to do so, I also reserve the right to self-identification. I therefore reject semantic arguments for identification without due consideration. I reject the attempts of others to categorize me without my consent. I'll read that, that last bit again. I reject the attempts of others to categorize me without my consent. So this is an issue of personal liberty. I may agree with some aspects of, uh, of feminist thought, and I certainly uh, agree with some aspects of atheist thought. But I reject the attempts of others to simply come out and assert that I am either a feminist or an atheist. Unless I have come out and said so myself first. And this applies to everything. This applies to, uh, to any identity that we can take on for ourselves. Whether it's uh, man or heterosexual or software engineer. All three of which are true in my case. Uh, these are things that are contributed to by one's natural state, perhaps, but ultimately the decision is ours whether we want to take those on as labels and make those a part of our social identity. So I've been grappling with the issue of whether to call myself an atheist, and this is a difficult one for me because, as I said, I don't approach these things lightly. Denotatively, yes, obviously I'm an atheist. Connotatively, so I've been exploring what the connotations of the term atheist are. I've been reading the literature, I've been reading the counter literature, and ultimately I still don't think that I've quite fully crossed the bridge yet. But I think that I'm well on my way. And I think that I'll get there in my own time, and when I finally get there, if I ever get there, uh, it will be by my own will and by my own choosing, and it won't have anything to do with what anybody else has to say about me or my beliefs or who I am. I feel very strongly about this in terms of not just atheism, but in terms of any ism that could potentially be applied to me. So, if I'm espousing my beliefs, if I'm communicating with you or arguing with you or debating with you about ideas or principles, Please do not try to dismiss me by categorizing me. Also, please do not try to claim me by categorizing me. Both are offensive because both abridge my personal liberty.